So I think during the storm of Isaias, we had that major discharge onto Brook Road. Um, Ida. Ida, sorry, Ida and o Oakwood Road. <laughs> Reset. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and, um, you know, we had no really idea what, what, what was happening or where it was coming from. So, um, you know, this will give us an explanation. It's really just a summary of uh, a long story. So this is this picture is from 1962, and this right here is Old Homestead, <coughs> and this right here is Oakwood Road, and this is all underveloped. You have the begin at Cliff Road, and I think this is Soundview. Mm -hmm. So you have certain things that are starting to come into place, um, but this. This is important because you'll see this is the actual discharge basin or area where somebody decided way back when that this would become the area where this entire development and more would become the discharge of, for their stormwater runoff. Um, and honestly, we only have learned this because of what happened with Ida. There's no this is pre-incorporation of the village, basically. Um, and <coughs> this is now 1978. You'll see that here you have some of the houses actually taking shape. Still not all of them, but um, I think that entire Harbor Hill section was probably built out by early 80s. That'd be fair, there was probably some outliers on Peninsula and some others, but um, basically, you'll start to you see start to see the, the plots um, filling in. Now, this is just a an image. I don't know when this was taken, but you can see even with the development going around, you see that this is really still a very natural, highly vegetated. But you can still see the cavern, and um, this is then the entire watershed area. It's a total, and correct me if I'm wrong, Joe, 55 acres? I do not know. Yep, okay, it's 55 acres, <laughs> this entire area. Okay, and you, there are three catch basins. You have catch basin one in here, you have catch basin two, and then you have one all the way over here on Soundview, catch basin three. These are the large water collection containers and all of these pour into this area. And um, the charts in the back will show you that when you're building something, obviously in the 80s, or when this was first sort of starting to get approved, the stormwater calculations were nowhere near what they are now. So this was designed to catch, I think it's 1.8 inches where the design was for less than two inches, and now the design should be for nine inches of stormwater runoff, hence the blowout. We'll come back to this slide towards the end. There was a lot of uh, surveying and data collection that had to go on as a result of trying to de determine the scope and size. Here we are at Old Homestead up here. This is right, I think this is Alice in the Points house maybe, or up here somewhere. You come down, you make that kind of snake-like turn, and you'll see the head of the, the discharge basin right here. And some of you may have walked this. It is, I think it's, uh, I wanna say almost two miles or something crazy. No, so no. Long. no. Between yeah. Old Homestead and, and Oakwood? Yeah. It's half a mile? It's, no, it's gonna probably be half a mile. Maybe, maybe, big, maybe a mile. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's a big area. Mm -hmm. I think this is, I forget like, the size yeah. of this, like minimally four acres. And this is Oakwood Road here. And you see that as the lines get closer together, that's this, that, that means your topography is, is steep. All right, so we're gonna zoom in on that a little bit more. Um, you'll see this is really the area that was destroyed and all the water came down and blew out 
what's known as the head wall down at the end of Oakwood. Um, and the amount of material, you can see here the, uh, the erosion is starting to get impacted all, all along the sides. Uh, you can, if we're starting to zoom in a little bit closer, you'll see here, this is again the, the, head, the wall closest to Old Homestead. This head wall here is still intact. It's a concrete wall and there's a pipe coming out. So the stormwater runoff is still coming through that pipe, but it's just discharging, you know, and really chewing up this area and everything else in the way. Um, this, this entire wall here was blown out. Is that right, Joe? Yes. This is the wall that was blown out. Yeah, I have that picture. Yeah, so that was up picture. here. So all of this, all of this material, everything just came streaming down. And then with the force of that blew out the, this head wall, which we did, we did do repairs to this head wall. We spent about $80,000 about three years ago um, reinforcing this head wall here. Um, but the, the force of the water coming down must have just been intolerable. Okay, you can see more of the engineering. This is this was this is what we're putting it. We're planning to put back into place. Um, you, you, again, you know, here's uh, old homesteads up here. Your water's going to start running in. This all has to be put back in and maintain all of this sensitive material to keep the water flowing down. Just a cross section, sort of the way the piping has to run to keep the water flowing from one point to another. So re, re, reshaping the walls, yeah, Kath? I When we went there, I saw where, I think it's this end, was blown out, and now it's a cavern and the water comes right through. That gets rebuilt up with what material? So, um, I'll go back up. You'll see this is, this is giving you some of the engineering yep. on, you know, reinstating concrete, um, drainage basins, is there a concrete wall that goes in there? There's well, it's right there is a concrete. That is. That wall right there, yep. The one then, that, is that existing or? Is no, that's a, all new. This is no, what, no this is the, they, this all has dirt. to be, is what we're proposing that has to be rebuilt because it's all gone. So then the water would, any overflow from the basin would go through those pipes and where, then what happens to it, it? It still flows through to the end. Yep. So let me go back up. It's still, it's, it's coming out at a great speed right. here because this is all the street. <clears throat> from Old Homestead and from Soundview. So the head wall here has to be rebuilt. They, they, I'm gonna get to it. They, they dug a test pit here okay. to add more drainage basins in here and then it's, it'll flow out gradually and come down here gradually, hopefully be absorbed by more catch basins. And then we're adding at the, the bottom here still more catch basins. Okay. Right, you know? so hopefully it'll collect up in, in, in the it's like a actual pool sump right. area. Yep. They're gonna be pulling out like 2,200 cubic yards of material. sand material from there before they start rebuilding the sides okay. and restoring the area. And then they'll build a head wall there out of concrete, another material. And then as you get further, and as the mayor mentioned down at the bottom, there's going to be several pools. Are, the, are all of those darker lines concrete walls? No. Oh. That's Which all going to be re- Which is the topography? This here? That's yeah. all regrading. Topsoil, hydro seed, recharge basin, slide soaps, and, and, and Embankment berm, so it's all going to be, you know, regraded, all sure. natural, natural reseeded. So the concrete is at the beginning, right where that square is, right. where this blowout was, but not all the way down. No, no, okay. no, because basically what they're trying to do is protect this slope. There's a test pit here to get, you know, so they can sink, you know, test the soil to see what other drainage systems can be sunk in here. Hopefully everything collects here and just right. gradually then pulls through the rest of the. What, what is the proper nature of this thing? Take a walk up there. Yeah, yeah. So get the visual. Yeah, Sluage or something? The sluice way? Sluice way. <laughs> is that a word? <laughs> yes. It's at the beginning of the presentation. Yeah. So, because <laughs> you know, then the water can just naturally flow through here gradually. But when they're, when all of this system is, is blown out, it's just running through here like a river. It's nothing to really, it's called a catch basin, people. Okay, so we get to the end. We do a speed through here, but this is a, um, you know, this is Oakwood Road here. So this, all this head wall will be reinstated, more drainage systems put in place here, 
So that as the water is gradually coming down and flowing through, it'll still collect in here. Um, you know, we had a lot of devastation to the to the uh, to the to the wall, the natural wall. This is the head wall. Uh, behind behind this wall is old homestead. So this is the water coming naturally through here on a good day. This That's was the, the degree to the blowout. You can see the cavernous result of the water just charging through. These are some of the pictures of, you know, just the complete erosion of the, the slope, which we will want to reinstate and vegetate. Um, this is kind of uh, back towards Old Homestead before you're moving down Old Homes to Old, Old Homestead. This is the the bottom where it looks like now. You see the water just took out the entire roadway. Um, these were taken on last November. We had a four inch rain event that day. This is some of the destruction of what used to exist. Um, you can see some of the metal, you know, piping, just like, you know. And this is probably all material from the streets. That is what they're going to be carting out. Uh, 22,000 cubic yards is like 170 truck fills of material that has to be taken out of there. Where do they bring that? They bring it to a place where they clean it off-site. Thank God it's, you know, nowhere near us. This is the test pit that they dug. Again, that's the old homestead head wall. Jesus. This oh is a test goodness. pit so they could get the soil borings. Whoa. Um, see how far down they had to go to see yeah. where the, uh, the water could be absorbed. That's crazy. So total, these slides are tiny, but total drainage area is 55 acres. Um, we should be looking to rebuild this at a nine inch capacity. The drainage capacity right now is 1.87. See how much work has to be done there. So again, catch basin one, which is here, collects nine acres. Catch basin two, which is up here. This is all. This is 40.9 acres of stormwater runoff. And then the <coughs> third one, catch basin three up here, is 5.4 acres. So we've got a lot of stormwater runoff, you know, being diverted into this area. It's not a mystery that that happened. We are doing further work with um, Holtzmacher on Soundview because they're feeling that um, these catch basins here maybe can be diverted to a different place off of Old Homestead before they actually get to the, this catch basin. So we're trying to offset some of the load going into the catch basin, but um, we're, we're not quite there yet. Um, and that um, will be an additional cost or an add-on so we have made an application um, to FEMA. We brought them up there after the storm and took them up to this area. Um, we've presented all this material to them and the proposed budget or to, to, re to redo this project. Um, that is before we got to the, the drainage, you know, these add-ons. It's a 900, we already approved this. We approved DF Stone, $932,000, right? And, uh, you know, the, 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 the weird thing is, <laughs> is that although FEMA's like, oh yeah, you guys have a really good chance of getting this money back, they don't give you an award letter. <laughs> right? Uh, total is $946,878. Um, they don't give you an award letter, so um, they're, we're trying to kind of get, and that's one of the reasons we really haven't started the job. DF Stone is ready to go. In fact, they're ready to go this week, right, Joe? Yep, just waiting for that performance bond. And, um, you know, this is one of those situations where I don't think we can't do this because we're just going to have a problem pouring out onto Oakwood Road and it's going to get a, become a bigger and bigger issue for us um thought process is of course the federal government pays 90 cents on the dollar so if they want you know and we've presented everything to them we can't imagine why we wouldn't get the money but it's one it's a reimbursable project you got to spend it in order to get it so um you know we uh 
we, I just need to make sure that everybody's aware of where we're at with this because, Kathy Ann? Uh, were they able to give us a, a predicted lifespan of this work? Oh, that's a question. I mean, the, this lasted since for the 40, 40 years in its current condition, so I would imagine more than that if it's all new construction. Another 30, 40 years, I don't, yeah. Well, and if it's rated for a nine, it rated an, an effect, effective for a nine inch rainfall, um, let's hope for many reasons yeah. if that's enough. Yeah, and if we, if we can take any portion of it off or add additional drainage before it actually gets to the, right. the catch basin, that'd be good. Now, I have to forewarn you guys, this is not the only catch basin in the village of Port Jefferson. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we have to continue to work with Steve's department and identify, because um, at the time that's happened, this, this particular catch basin was still deeded to the town of Haven because they did not effectively turn it over to us because that's where the land use project started. And we inherited it and we are responsible for it, although the deed did not transfer. Brian's already worked with seeing if we could go back and get the town to pay for this. And I'm like, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, but so in the, can I sure. sorry to interrupt you? No. Um, <clears throat> in the early part of this uh, document, <coughs> talks about how the original plans are not a record right. anywhere, right? Right. Um, do we know who was responsible for building in at that time frame? I have no idea who the developer was. Maybe I think it could have been a Sonny Lanson. Lance. Uh, uh, Lampson, I did. I think did some parts of it, and but Winston? then you had probably others. You know, I, I don't know. Norman Winston. I'm not sure it was Winston. I don't. I don't know. We can. So there may it's hard be to investigate when you don't have maps. You know. There may be um, people who are still living that were involved with the incorporation of Port Jefferson yeah. that might be able to identify maybe something about that. Right. No. No. But yeah. I don't know if it's necessary for what we're actually doing. Well, so the other the other recourse that we have mm -hmm. is, you know, this was a catch basin that was built for these particular parcels. And if we don't get refunding back, we may have to, we can consider a special assessment against this neighborhood to maintain and service their catch basin. How many catch basins are there? Three. No, sorry, in, in the village. Um, I, I'm, I'm just wondering, sort of as, it's an interesting uh, idea because obviously those residents would be very upset if that was just, you know, because they, they didn't know when they bought this and that. But if, if we know that there are catch basins throughout the village and it sort of becomes well known that as uh, these flooding uh, occurrences continue to happen, yeah. I mean, even today we're staring out our window and we're like, I hope Peter the Reef's okay. You know, there's, yeah, I know. I, this is going to keep you. happening more severely more often. Um, if it, I think that would be a decision that we would make for all of the. Yeah, it would have to be stormwater. You know, which is not doing it to this neighborhood. Correct. It would have to be. Yeah. It would have to. We just did this for Brook Road. We did it for the that drainage from the top of Brook at the end of um, Long Longfellow, Longfellow yeah. all the way down to Brook. It was you know because when these you know back in the day when these developers were doing that, they would deed these things back to the village and the village you know responsibility to maintain them and watch over them and make sure they're cleared and it's a lot. Hold on, is there a catch basin under the Masonic Lodge? Is this a trick? What's that? I'm joking. <laughs> no, I'm joking. No. No. no, there's a creek behind the Masonic I, Lodge. I, I, <laughs> that's 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 true. True. The flooding. I was yeah. well that was one of the questions I was gonna circle back to is does that flood? That's another it's off this presentation. Um regarding the, you know. the, the the drainage systems. Uh, are they all sluice is out there sluice ways? You can go underneath the the where it all gets clogged up on the top of the street and you can see that there are branches things growing yeah. out of some of the the the, the drains Slushways. drains yeah <laughs> the drainage actually the storm drains right um is there a maintenance process that we have in place like a scheduled maintenance of all, like all the storm drains throughout the village that uh, dpw i don't believe there is Executes well, against DPW should know the the problem drains <coughs> that exist throughout the village, and regularly inspect to see if they need to be cleaned out. So that's what should be happening, and they should be keeping logs of all the maintenance that is done. Okay, so they should, but are they doing that? Is that is that something they, that's they going my forward? understanding is they were not doing that, but they should be doing it now. 
it's a um, it's you know I one of these days next maybe the next meeting I'll break out the you know the um, the stormwater uh, maps so you can see how many yeah. catch basins we have it would be a non-stop every day just going around like it is it, but there are it, guards that you can put over them to prevent yeah. things to yeah. go in and yes. that's something I wanted to bring up for preventative you know it doesn't necessarily always take manpower there are smart things that can be done there are right. matting systems that can go over new technology and other things that can happen yeah mm -hmm. so uh, and all that type of grant money is out there to help with all this stuff um, so but this is a situation that is in front of us um, you know we we are thankful that we have enough resources that you know we can decide to advance this project and um, you know um, see whether or not uh, you know the federal government reimburses us in a timely manner uh, lots of times they don't but on these particular projects I don't think we're waiting around like we did for the FEMA wall uh, for the East Beach which took them like three or four years to reimburse us for that but uh, that's kind of no, where we are yeah they're, they're pretty good with these um, disaster declarations because we already received $60,000 to repair Oakwood Road under oh. Ida so they like yeah, to they like to get because right. of, that was direct damage from this but yeah. you know you just yeah, have to get the work done you know. provide them with all the backup information the checks that were cashed so they can close everything out I, I mean i think as a village again we're going to be looking at a lot of these instances over the coming years yeah. decades and you know <laughs> as I'll say, well, to fall, I'll, as a young homeowner, I'm still delighted yeah. to live in this village, and you know, know that wherever you live, these problems are going to yeah. be occurring. And uh, <coughs> I think a lot of this conversation has been very productive to start long-term thinking of the financial management of that. But you know, I think, like you said, Mayor, this I don't think there's an option to not do this. Right. Um, one thing I was going to say is, uh, uh, Joe P. W. Grocer was a good company to work with on this particular project um, you know I think they got us a lot of material in a timely manner and um, you know it was obviously it was a lot of underlying work that had to be done you know in order to just create you know the, the, the maps for instance everybody's like what's taking so long with the survey map you see the, the size and the, the topography of that that was a beast that thing up there but um you know, I, I think, uh, you know, these are part, part of the uh, delicacies of trying to manage our budget, but also get projects done and knowing when the bills need to be paid and, you know, how to keep the cash flow and not. So I, I think, we're, I, I feel confident that we can move forward with this and pretty confident we'll be reimbursed. I just can't give you timing on it. So what's the board's threshold? I'll just comment that based on what Joe just told us about the um, reimbursement of the work that was done on an outlay for Oakwood Road, that bodes well for this, and I'm completely supportive of this project. They're, they're ready to move, so let's move. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just wanted you guys to have a full... It's got to be done. Sure. Okay. It has to be done. Put all the oars in the water. Okay.